thank you guys for coming to uh, my talk. I want to talk about simple layer twos, uh, empl employing the power of simplicity, which is a language we're developing at Blockstream. So, um, first I want to talk about what simplicity is, because most of you don't know, maybe you've heard of the term, but you don't know what it is. So, um, we have coins, lock and these two dicks out, and we want to, um, given a certain secret, a certain witness, we want to be able to spend those UTXOs, move them to other UTXOs, and everybody else is not supposed to spend those UTXOs. So this is the problem we're trying to solve. And what we actually want is we want to to lock, to, to, to express arbitrary spending conditions on the blockchain. So we actually want to express Turing complete spending conditions on the main chain. And the key idea is that we don't need the Turing complete language to express these spending conditions because we only want to verify that a given secret, a given kind of key to uh, the spending condition satisfies the spending condition so I can spend the coins. And this can be done, like I said, with the Turing incomplete language, even though the spending condition is Turing complete. This is what we're trying to do. Um, the language should be structured. I will go into Miniscript later. And a structured language has many many good properties. Uh, maybe hands up, who knows Miniscript? Who likes Miniscript? Some some people like Miniscript. Miniscript was kind of the secret star at Advance and Bitcoin, and I really like that people are embracing its good properties now because I think it can benefit the Bitcoin community. And it's a free upgrade, so you can use it immediately without a software. And a structured language gives many benefits, like you can check that your programs are correct very easily. In general, the programs are easier for both humans and machines to read. If you take a look at the Miniscript program, it's very easy to know what it does. And for a machine, it's very easy to take it, take it apart in pieces and analyze it to check what the fee rate might be, to check if all spending paths are there, and to check that other spending paths that you don't want are not there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's machine readable. And um, the third thing we want is we want to formally verify our spending conditions. So we want to write a specification that makes it very clear how I can spend UTX. So right now, it's very informal. You, know, you write in English or you write down in some pseudocode how you can spend UTXO, but you cannot or can hardly write down like mathematically rigorously how I can spend UTXO, especially when with a public key that might be work that might work. But if you have a roll-up or something complicated on the main chain which people want to implement, you want to write, you need a language like simplicity which has a formal, which enables you to write formal specifications about the programs. Sorry that the slide is not here, I'm not sure what, what happened. I hope the other slides are here. So this is kind of the vision for simplicity, the vision what we want. So we want spending conditions, we want structure, we want verification. Simplicity obviously wants to solve these things. So we have Miniscript, and Miniscript is structured Bitcoin script. So we have Bitcoin script, but with a tree structure. A well-formed Bitcoin script is Miniscript. Simplicity can be thought of as an extension of Miniscript, because Miniscript has to, is restricted by what is already there. You cannot do more than what Bitcoin can currently do. With simplicity, you want to go further and enable as much as possible. We want to enable these Turing complete spending conditions. It can be verified without a Turing complete language. It's a functional language. So you have programs that are nested functions. We call these, uh, we call these functions combinators. I will not go into how you write these combinators, but I have um, later for you some really nice tools that you can try out on the Replit. Um, where you can get really familiar with with the combinators. Because who knows Rust? Who is a Rust developer? Congratulations, you already know simplicity. <laughs> I, I wrote a playground in Rust that uses just the Rust type system to do to do these programs, and you can actually execute simplicity using the Rust type system. And the Rust compiler will give you type hints and stuff. It's really cool. Um, and simplicity is low level, so it's an assembly-like language that's very small. We have nine combinators, so we have a very uh, small set of 
instructions, and this is different from Miniscript because Miniscript has A, more instructions, and B, these are higher level, they are public keys and conjunctions and so on. And with simplicity, you have very low level kind of primitives which enable you to write larger ones. And the semantics are defined in the Cork Theorem Prover, so this gives you the ability to write a formal specification about your program. You can learn more about on Revlet. I think that's that's online. It's online. It's live. It's live. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that during and after the talk, and also during the hackathon. It's um, I built the best resource on simplicity yet online, and um, it should like, answer a lot of questions. And it has all it has all the links to old talks. It has um, this talk uh, in much more detail. And um, yeah, feel free also to ask questions afterwards. And is there an X package for simplicity on elements? Yes, so um, I will talk about that too. So we are working on integration of simplicity into elements and there is a Nix package that will enable you to get this running and to try out simplicity with elements. Cool. And now I want to invite you on a little dream. And so I want you to imagine the dream that we live in a world where simplicity works, where simplicity is deployed and you can use it and we want to imagine what we can do with it. So last year we had the hackathon um, at BDC++ and uh, we, uh, Justin Moon came up to me and said, let's do Minisim, let's do, and this, at the time it was mini, mini Mint and Simplicity, Minisim. I guess now it's Fanny Sim, there are many, many names. Um, and I, wanted, I just want to talk about what we did and what we could con how we could continue this. So what we did is, we did a lightning payment in Fanny Mint, and this is how it goes. So we have Alice who lives in the Mint, and she has some Fanny Mint, say Fanny Mint sets. We have Bob who lives on the lightning network, he sends an invoice, and we have the Gateway who lives kind of on the border, on the edge of both worlds, and then importantly, the gateway has some lightning sets. And now, what the gateway can do is, Alice can incentivize the gateway to pay Bob, uh, and she does that by giving the gateway more fediment sets than Bob requires in lightning. So the gateway sees, it, sees this um, opportunity for arbitrage, and uh, ends up with more money and Alice ends up paying Bob indirectly for the gateway. How does that look like? I, I made a little, little uh, flowchart, so we have Alice who lives in the Mint world, we have Bob who have some, has an invoice, and the gateway. The gateway also has some lightning um, sets. And what Alice does is Alice sends her money, her Fanny Mint sets, into an HTLC, also called an account. And this is locked by the pre-image or the image of uh, Bob's invoice. And right now Alice cannot really pay Bob because maybe Alice doesn't have the Lightning um, account, she wants to pay for the mint. And now the gateway sees that and the gateway understands that if the gateway pays Bob, then the gateway can get the sets from the HDLC. And importantly, Alice sent more money to the HDLC than Bob requires. So there is, you know, there is some, some fee to be had. And so the gateway creates this HDLC to Bob, which is locked by the same <coughs> image as you can see, also by B. And then eventually this payment goes through, and the way how HDLCs work is that the gateway ends up with the pre image from Bob. And then the gateway can redeem the HDLC from the mint and get Fanny Mint sets. And in the end, the gateway has kind of swapped between from lightning sets to fediment sets, but it has gotten more coins number-wise, so it, it, it gained in value. What could, so this is what we did. And back in the day, I didn't understand this, so this was also good for me to, to revise that. Uh, because it was very interesting. There are different kinds of, of paying from fediment to lightning and so on. Now, what can what did simplicity do, and how, what can simplicity do in the future? So, the mint HTC can become a simplicity program, which would have the same semantics as the existing code. 
because th this current code is a Rust implementation, uh, so the Mint HSC is implemented in Rust. Um, it's, it doesn't even use any dedicated language like Bitcoin script or Simplicity. And what Simplicity could bring to the table is a generic scripting language, which would be much more flexible, extendable, and less error prone than custom, a custom Rust implementation. Um, and this could also be reused for other projects that are similar. And speaking of extension, you can, you can implement new primitives. You can do a PTLC, which is like a more private HTLC using adapter signatures and point locks. Or you can do new signature modes. You can do any prep out, or you can, you can also do other signature modes. Simplicity uh, supports universal signature modes. Or you can do DLCs, uh, discrete lock contracts, um, where you can, which you can use for betting and other things. Um, and I'm not an expert on this, but I think the Federation might serve as an oracle on this, which is useful because it has kind of a trusted party in this. And something a bit more exotic, but this is also thinkable, is you can do a direct cash payment. So you can put simplicity programs inside the eCache nodes. So an eCache node is the eCache that I have, the eCache that I hold, it's called the eCache node. And I can put like this cryptographic commitment to a simplicity program inside the node and use that for spending. And how do I spend? I spend by satisfying the program. So I, I go to the mint, I say I want, to redeem, I want to redeem this node for another node. And I have to give, I have to reveal the program, and I have to reveal a satisfying witness. It's like it's like that. And and this would enable things like multi-sig, so you could have shared ownership of eCash and other things. And I already mentioned Taproot, so if you want to go even more exotic, you could put a tap tree inside eCash node, and each tap leaf commits to some simplicity program. Again, it's more likely that we will have lightning payments than direct cash payments. That's the Fatty Mint world. I have had to talk about rollups, so I will talk about rollups. Um, I, I learned a lot about them recently, so I thought I'd just put them in. So, rollups, as far as I understand them, are trustless sidechains, or they are like trustless sidechains. So, you have a layer two, and this can be anything. It's, it can be, it can have UTX source or an account model, it can have any scripting language like Bitcoin script and EVM. Anything it can have, it can be liquid, anything. It could even be Bitcoin itself, even though that's unlikely. And then you have a layer one, which is a rollup UTXO that you spend for each time you interact with the rollup on layer one. And this is a recursive covenant. So whenever you interact, whenever you spend the rollup UTXO, you have to recreate it um, for almost all spend parts. You can pack in, you can pack out, so you can enter and leave the system. And importantly, this is why, the, why it's trustless, each layer 2 block is verified by layer 1 by the use of your knowledge proofs. So uh, layer, layer 1 verifies that the state transitions of layer 2 are valid. I'll talk about this a bit more in detail soon. And also the layer 2 set is on layer 1 in a compressed form, so this solves the availability issue. So just by looking at layer 1, we are able to reconstruct the latest layer 2 state. And this enables things like a unilateral withdrawal of someone uh, who is like censored by the roller provider. What would this look like? I have a little flow chart. So we have layer two. We have some transactions that go into a layer two block, and this could be this could be larger than the Bitcoin. This could be anything. The transactions could be accounts, UTXOs. It doesn't really matter. These are accumulated, and this roller provider produces a new state and, and the proof that the new state can be gotten from the old state using the rules. So the new, the new state is a valid transition from the old state. And this is your knowledge proof. So creating this proof requires a lot of time, but verifying the proof doesn't. And it's also logarithmic in size, so it's very small. So we can put this on layer one without DDoSing layer one. And this goes into a layer one block. And then we wait for this block to be verified, but confirmed uh, by layer one. And this means that layer one 
verified that the vector transitions are correct, and then we can go on with this process, continue, and get new blocks. And this also means that the block rate of layer two must be slower than the block rate of layer one, slower or equal. But the blocks could be larger. And you could also do recursive rollups. Um, there are many upsides and downsides of this. I will not go into this. Um, there were many good talks about this uh, today, so I encourage you to check, check them out. Okay, what could simplicity do here? So, this is a huge uh, undertaking, right? So we write this really huge layer 2 um, setup. So we need some code. We write, we write a lot of code, we will write large smart contracts, some call them. So it's useful to have loops, to have arbitrary logic, and to have programmatic shortcuts to reduce the burden. So we don't need to copy everything. What's what happened? Um, why can't I have loops in Bitcoin script, and why can't I have it in simplicity? All right, so, um, I mean, loops also... So in simplicity, you can't have infinite loops, right? So that's, that's important, because it, if you had that, you would have Turing completeness. In Bitcoin script, I guess you can, you can like, hack together a loop, but it would be very ugly and unelegant. In simplicity, you have this um, disconnect operator. It's, it's kind of an optional operator. But you can, you can say, when I spend through the install, I reveal how many iterations of the loop I need. You have to have a fixed amount, so you, because infinite loops are not supported. Why aren't infinite loops supported for Bitcoin? Infinite loops would be Turing complete language. So Bitcoin script is not Turing complete. If you take a look at Bitcoin script, it just, I think, I'm not sure if it monotonically decreases the stack size, but the stack and the program size just goes down. And, and when, when the stack is zero, then the program has, has to hold. So um, you cannot have these exponential blow ups, which would be infinite loops in Bitcoin script. And with simplicity, we don't enable that either. So this loop, just it's kind of like a cleaner way to write code, and during the spending time, we can reveal how many iterations we need. But during when we make the DTX, oh, we don't have to commit to a certain number of iterations. Okay. Front ends, right? So when we write the code, we want to be able to write this in a language that is useful, that is good for the developer, that is easy to use, and uh, that maybe has some useful error messages which will decrease the development time, will decrease the code complexity and the potential for error. And I think we really need to reach that time when we stop writing assembly language and we start to use a high level language. Maybe this will be like the advent, advent of C for, the, for, for programmers, but not for Bitcoin, something like that. So we need front ends for maybe like Miniscript, Miniscript is a good first step. So I like that people use it now. I think we should go away from Bitcoin script at least using it in a raw form. I think that's that's a lot of waste of time. Um, and among other things, simplicity also supports streaming hashes. So this is important for rollups in particular. So rollups, but also other constructions. We need to hash very large values, and maybe we don't even know how large these values are. In Bitcoin script, we can only hash 256 bits. Um, 32 bytes, and um, it's just not enough. And then simplicity also in, in elements, you can do streaming hashes. So you just add more data into this hash construct, and then you at some point you say, I want the output. So this goes as long as you want it to go, just like the loops I have talked about. And introspection. So simplicity supports any introspection you want. I mean, we have very limited to the current transaction, we don't want to have arbitrary blockchain introspection to any blocks, that would be insane, that would be an insane amount of indexing. But besides that, you can, anything you want to introspect, any input or output, you can do that with simplicity by adding a jet. It's a special kind of jet. What's jet? Jet. Jet means kind of two things. Usually, so jets can be these shortcuts, so jets are a shortcut for a large program that we don't want to write like a macro. That's meaning number one. Now, meaning number two is a jet is a introspection into the transaction. Why is it the same name? They have the same name because they are implemented by some C code that we call. So it's kind of like a combinator, 
that call C code, and either the C code implements a large program that is equivalent to something we replace, a shortcut, or it just reads from the transaction, which is an introspection set. Jets are cool. Um, and jets are important for simplicity because you wouldn't be able to write useful programs with, without, them, without them. They would the programs would be too large, but the consensus limits would exclude those programs. So I can jet from simplicity to C for the execution, and then I know that it's going to finish and come back to Yeah, yeah. So they are proven and verifiable C, yeah. Cool. Um, speaking of that, so you can do you can write a formal specification. In case of the rollups, you can do ACKP spec. Um, and I hope uh, rollup developers are looking into this and consider this because it would be a huge improvement over the status quo. Like just clearly stating what you want to achieve would be great. <laughs> in a pip, for instance, or something like that. In mathematical terms, you could specify. The covenant, which would be a layer higher, so this would be tr the transaction layer, which wouldn't be strictly simplicity, but simplicity encourages that. You could even specify this layer two state transition, which is even more high level. It's not even simplicity anymore or layer one anymore. But if you already have gone so far, why not do? Why not go the whole whole way? And if you really want to go the extra mile, you can also do correctness proofs, which is a lot of work. I think for rollups and for if you really want to trust these things, for, for them to be really trusted, for them, for you to rely on the mathematics, there should be a correctness proof. But just writing the formal stack is huge already. Um, and there are some there are some front ends already. So we have policy language and Miniscript. This is a policy language of an HTLC. And this is the same policy compiled to Miniscript, and as you can see, they are very similar. The Miniscript has some more detail, which is related to how big script works. But it's, um, for simplicity, it's not necessary. And these could be front-ends for simplicity too, so you can, we are working on that, we already have that basically. So um, we could take the above and um, compile this with simplicity as well. There's min.sc, which is a cool website. It's literally the website's name, and you can you can write functions, you can write you can have variables, you can instantiate those functions and get your spending coins, your your Bitcoin script essentially, which is really cool, and people should use it more. And may, maybe for simplicity, we could come up with some imperative language, or maybe a function language that is really is a spiral. Um, that would really enable developers to write really large programs like a rollup or a DAO or something like that. But this is far future stuff where we don't have that yet. Um, right, I, I want to talk about elements a little bit. So, um, it's a federated sidechain, it's the basis of Liquid. So, you can have better sidechains. Sidechains are very similar to rollups. Um, I guess rollups minus ZKP plus the federation. So they carry over a lot of these, almost all of the benefits of simplicity. So you can do better scripting, you can do new, crypt, new cryptography, you can do front ends, you can have verification of your, the scripts that you use, of the programs you use. And simplicity is made for elements. So simplicity was designed for elements, and the two are compatible. Um, the, all the opcodes carry over. I think everything you can do in elements script you can do in simplicity, or you will be able to. All the introspection you can do, you can do in simplicity. You can do assets, and simplicity is also compatible with the confidential transactions. So it's um, in that plus, it's just a plus. There are, no, there are no negatives. And we're working on merging simplicity into elements core. Um, which will be a special captive version, so people can, and also liquid, right? So this will also go into liquid, and people can choose to use it or not. Um, but this will be very exciting to see this finally deployed in, in the wild. And we have some new tools. So I developed, I guess, a, uh, a descriptor wallet. Um, I call it Tappy. It's tabboot only. 
by its name. And for me, this was mainly like to learn about, to interact with Bitcoin Core and, and use Taproot transactions and descriptors. And it turned out it became the first simplicity wallet. So it supports Bitcoin, it supports elements, and it also supports elements with simplicity. You can find this on the Replit and on GitHub. And I implemented simplicity descriptors, which are very similar to Miniscript or to Miniscript policy to be exact. Those are also specified in the Replit, on the Replit. So check this out. And um, I have some hacker, hacker found ideas that you could do. So one of the things, one of the ideas would be to use Tappy or to use anything you want to interact with element simplicity and and send your first simplicity transaction because you can do that already. Cool. This was the dream. So we, this was the world. We we wake up now and see what maybe we dreamt about. So. We have seen some. We have seen how simplicity can improve the status quo. We have seen that how simplicity can help with eCash, which would be adding a generic scripting language. So any any system that uses a spending condition UTXO kind of model could use simplicity and would benefit from simplicity because it's very um, pure language for exactly this pur for exactly this purpose. So instead of writing your custom implementation, use simplicity. It's much better. Rollups benefit from simplicity. So we have a very powerful and very viable language with front ends. So we have the expressivity, the power to support ZKP. We have the ability to verify that what we do is correct, so people actually trust us. Or the math at least. Um, and we have front ends, so we actually finish in time. And sidechains are very similar to roll so in this case, elements and liquid is compatible with simplicity, so we can extend it and make it better. And we have better tooling now, so this is really important. I think that developers don't need that, that developers don't want to read long lines of, of, of PDF uh, file. They want to try it out. They want to try out the command line, GUI, they want to send the transactions. So this is um, our new focus and I'm really pleased that we have really nice playground that you can try in Rust to familiarize yourself with simplicity and also Tappy that you can use to send your first simplicity transactions. And we also have other tools to visualize the programs and, and much more, so try it. Thanks. Yes. Can you show a simplicity program for one of the circuits? One of the circuits. Um, okay, I'll try. <laughs> In the replica, there's a module. That's replica. Okay, right. Um, talk through it. It's good replica, right? It's good. <laughs> um, where is it? I think it's. Yeah, right. Like, so there are different ways to visualize simplicity programs, and this is the circuit visualization that I kind of like. So, this is a P span. So, this is kind of where the program starts, and this is where the program ends. And they are wires, and they are labeled with the kinds of, with the type of values that live on the wire. One means unit, it's, it's nothing, it's empty. K means there's some kind of public key. H means there is a sick hash, a hash. S means there's a signature. X means they are like concatenated, they are combined. And I start with nothing because I, I don't know anything. And I have the public key, which is hard coded in the program. I have the sick hash, which is this introspection jet. So I get the sick hash, in this case, sick hash all of the transaction. I combine the two. And here I get the signature, which is part of the witness data. I combine them and I pipe them into the Schnorr verifier. And the Schnorr verifier checks if this signature matches this message, this sig hash, and this uh, public key. And if this matches, it does nothing, like a knob. If this uh, doesn't match, then it fails, which is why there is a little, little lightning. Um, and if this program fails, if this 
should already be verified fails, and this means don't spend. And if this runs through, then it means spend. This is how it works. But there are other ways to visualize programs. Can you show the tree? Yeah. Right, so there are, there are trees too. Um, so simplicity is a tree-based language, so it's basically, it's derived from MAST. If you do, maybe you know MAST, maybe you've heard of it, the Merkleized Haptex Syntax Tree by Russell O'Connor, who made simplicity. Um, so this is kind of its current state. And um, this is the same program as a MAST. So we have, I guess, in a way, tree-shaped circuits. <laughs> kind of wild. Um, and this, this tree structure means that it's very machine readable. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is the this is the key this is the key spin. I think I think we are out of time, right? So so let's let's stop. Th thank you guys. Thank you guys.